Hi guys, you find me today in a Volkswagen Golf Mark 6. This is the 2 litre diesel. Um, has 140 brake horsepower, actually, no, 140 PS, um, 138 brake horsepower, and 320 newton meters of torque. The whole point of this video is to talk about the transmission, which is the dual clutch. This might be fairly in depth, so. And also quite geeky so if you don't want to watch something quite detailed I would skip this video. A dual clutch gearbox is not an automatic despite what the salesmen say this is a simplification of terms in a sense this is so they can sell the car as an automatic to clients it's just it's a lot easier that way. What it is in fact is not an automatic it is a automated manual what that means is there's no torque converter, rather there are two clutches. There's one clutch for odd gears and one clutch for even gears. This, alongside with the ECU, allows the car to pre-select a gear ahead of time, which means that when you do actually need to change gear, it's instantaneous, or at least that's the theory. I first heard about these transmissions I think it might have been about 2006 when Top Gear tested the then new Audi TT and um, the 3.2 Quattro came with a 6 speed dual clutch gearbox. Now from what I can see online that is pretty much the same gearbox as is fitted to this 2011 car, um, it's the 6 speed. These transmissions really came into game because at the time classic torque converter were really slow, really laggy, used a lot of fuel and also blunted performance unbelievably because in the first few gears the torque converter is actually semi unlocked which means there's a bit of slip. It's I guess kind of like a slipping clutch in a sense. So everybody heralded the, uh, the dual clutches at the time because they were efficient um, the, the shifts were unbelievably fast. They would shift, as everyone said at the time, quicker than a human could change gear manually. And because there wasn't any slippage from the torque converter, it meant you could get really quick 0 to 60 times. However, and as I will state in this video, I think perhaps their time in cars like this, I think their time has maybe come to an end simply because classic torque converters have now become so good that I think perhaps dual clutches have come in some way slightly obsolete. The absolute classic example of this is the ZF 8-speed which is fitted in all sorts of cars. Um, Rolls-Royce, um, I think it's even Chrysler's, Jaguar Land Rover, it's in a whole spread of cars. Which just really shows how good it is. It's smooth, it's quick shifting, it's not too heavy, um, fuel efficient. It kind of answers to all of the criticisms that torque converters of old had, which these sorts of gearboxes had to answer, if that makes sense. In this video, I'm going to split it into two parts. I'm going to split it down um, into the things that I really like, and then the second part will be the things that I don't like. That was a Tesla Model X looks really thick that's the first one I've seen in the UK so what are the things that I like the shifts 99% of the time they are effortless very smooth very good efficiency these gearboxes tend to short shift if you're driving it sensibly in drive in an upshift of 1500 rpm which is crazy um, so it really does rely on the torque of the engine this means that even though I've been driving this car pretty hard today I'm still seeing um, a return of 56.6 average fuel economy which seems pretty good to me so this car is actually not owned by me it's owned by my granddad and he drives like well an 84 year old granddad whereas I'm only 21 I drive slightly more youthfully some would say aggressively I'd say youthfully um, and it only takes a few trips for it to reset to the way that I drive. And, you know, I only drive it once every three months or so, so it really does adapt quickly. 
It's also got a really responsive Tiptronic mode, so you just have to slice over and then it, and then it downshifts very quickly. It's very responsive in that regard. The only other dual clutch um, experience I've had was in a Ford Mondeo. The manual override on that wasn't particularly good. This is a lot better than this Volkswagen. So there you've seen something like the classic advantages of having a dual clutch over a classic torque converter. Now I'm going to speak about some of the disadvantages because there are quite a few in my opinion. Firstly, there are two modes. There's drive, which is the mode you use in everyday driving, and there's sport mode. Sport mode is meant to hold on to the gears a bit longer. I think it sharpens up the throttle response. That might be a placebo effect, but it feels a bit sharper to me. Um, so that, in theory, sounds really good. The only trouble is, is this car is not petrol. It's a diesel, which means it makes all its power under probably 3,000 revs. Over 3,000 revs, it really cuts off, and there's no point in really taking it out any further than 3,500. With Sport, it obviously keeps the revs up really high, which for a petrol would actually be ideal, but in a car like this, there's really no point. So arguably, arguably, it's a bit of a waste of time. It also, engine brakes, unbelievably strong. It's crazy. So I was coming down a hill the other day at about 60 and it was automatically engine braking, setting the revs over 3000 RPM. Now, in a diesel, it's quite clattery. Another thing that's very annoying is that there can be a bit of lag, as we just saw there. So yeah, although generally pretty responsive there can be sometimes a bit of lag and this is down to um, the main the main characteristic of a dual clutch gearbox as i said before there's one clutch for odd gears and one clutch for even gears which means that the gearbox can pre-select using the ecu um, which gear you're most likely to um, shift to next this works probably 80 to 90% of the time, but it can be caught out, and it can be caught out pretty easily. Say you're accelerating up through the gears, second, third, you're gradually accelerating. The gearbox is going to suppose that you want fourth next. However, if you're in third and then you floor it, instead of going down to second, immediately it will take a bit of time. And that can be a bit annoying. If you're in traffic and you see a little space and you want to have it straight away, sometimes you can't because of a bit of lag and that can be frustrating. As I said before, this gearbox short shifts arguably absurdly really. Um, it gets into fifth at 30 miles an hour and sixth at 40. Now, what that means is, although this is a diesel, with 320 newton meters of torque, which you know is quite a lot. Even a diesel doesn't produce enough oomph at like 1200 RPM for it to be sporty. So once again, if you do see a gap in the traffic and you want to take it, you might struggle. 